I want to sit down then. Let's talk about the DeMeo Lupertazzi family sit downs. Season one, episode six. Pax Soprano. You think I got the balls to drive in from New York and tell your uncle how we should run his family? As far as 2% of his action, that, that's up to you to settle. Because after all, that affects Tony as much as Hesh. Let's say one and a half on the shy business and 300 on a back tax. 250. In Pax Soprano, after Livia manipulates and convinces Junior to tax Hesh, Hesh isn't happy and expresses his concerns to Tony. So Tony goes and talks to Johnny Sack about having a sit down with Junior to resolve this. But there's a caveat. This arrangement is made without Junior knowing that Hesh went and spoke to Tony about this, because that could undermine Junior and make it look like Junior is not really the one who's in charge, when Tony had previously agreed with Junior that Junior could have the top spot. Of course, Johnny Sack knows all of this, but for Junior, ignorance is bliss here, I guess. Season four, episode four, The Wait. I want you to sanction the hit on Ralph Zifferano. He violated my wife's honor. Ralph slept with Jenny? We have a sit down after Polly tells Johnny Sack that Ralph Zifferano told a joke about Johnny's wife, Ginny. Let's just say it was the joke heard around the world, or at the very least, North Jersey. It's not important. Let's just agree it was unkind. If you weren't there, how do you know it's true? I'm not at liberty to say. You tell me who told you about it. We'll bring him in here. He corroborates what you're saying. I'll give you Ralph on a platter. As we know, Johnny Sack doesn't give up Polly's name. Although eventually, Tony figures that it was Polly. Ralph Ciferello is the only one who knows how to handle the Esplanade. Put Pat the Corvo in there. There are millions of dollars at stake. Again with the money? Yeah, again with the money. It's settled, John. So read the name of Price and get the fuck over it. Season 4, Episode 11, Calling All Cars. So after Polly tells Johnny Sack about the HUD scam, the Lupertazzi family is once again not happy. Feeling has an avenue thing. We had some words. Tony made it right. It's a different one now. I'm not sure what it is. All I know is fucking Ralph is going around bragging about how much they're making. Tony refuses to play ball, though, and is now even more aware that someone's talking too much in his family and costing them money. We want a 40% position in your HUD business. Well, because I've been on the other thing. You think you're entitled to reach into my pocket on this? We share Zellman. Therefore, any of the fruits of Zellman, we're entitled to. We done here? So after Tony refuses to play ball, but then comes back and has a counteroffer of 5.5%, Carmine rejects that. To retaliate, Carmine has Joey Peeps and another guy beat up Vic the Appraiser, a guy who did phony housing appraisals for Tony. So now things are heating up even more. So Tony decides to go to Miami to talk to Carmine's son, Carmine Lubertazzi Jr., known as Little Carmine. Tony figures that if anyone would have the ear of his dad, it would be his son. Season 4, Episode 12. Eloise. Right, so what is it? What's the offer? Forty percent of the HUD take across the board starting now. Forty. I thought little Carmine said he was gonna take care of this. Uh, he did. That's why the concession. We were at forty a week ago. Well that is done already, it's done. You keep that for yourself. Forty percent only applies to future deals. Let's go. After Tony rejects this barely a compromise from Carmine. He has Little Polly vandalize Carmine's new restaurant. Carmine retaliates by causing a work stoppage at a job site. Season 4, Episode 13, Whitecaps. In Whitecaps, we have the continued conflict over proceeds from the HUD scam and work with Zellman. At a certain point, Johnny Sack gets fed up. If Carmine's health is bad, if something were to happen to him, God forbid, all of this unpleasantness would just... So Johnny Zack asks Tony to take out Carmine to achieve that. The movement from outside is more forgivable and more understandable given the facts here. But then there's a last minute change of plans. Just talk to Carmine. He's ready to settle. Are you kidding me? Everything's in motion. Welcome to my world. Not unlike the last minute change of plans when Johnny Zack 
was going to meet his maker. I said 40, you said five and a half, which was ridiculous. Let's split the difference. 20%. I'm 15. You know what? In the interest of putting this shit to bed, that's what it's going to take. 15. My son was a big help in all this. I want you always to remember that. Even after I'm gone. But I'm not going no place. Melty's a fucking rhino, this guy. I suppose Carmine may have jinxed himself here, as we know that he passes away from a stroke not too long after, at the beginning of season five. Which leads us to our next sit-downs. Season five, episode three, Where's Johnny? How about this humidity? Lorraine, Angelo, and Lorraine's partner Jason meet with Tony and Junior to discuss the ongoing debacle between the different camps in the Lubertazzi family. The one thought I had in the interest of harmony, maybe there could be a power sharing situation. This is also another varsity athlete moment. There's a situation in our family that's gotten out of hand with John and Little Carmine. He's telling me to kick up direct to him. Problems Carmine never named a successor. There's a lot of potential for bloodshed. Potential? They almost killed us. Jason, men are talking here. You have any ideas? What are you asking him for? He never even had the makings of a varsity athlete. Your point being what, Junior? Three bosses, a uh, triumvir thing, like Caesar. Little Carmine, Johnny, and you. This way you're not such a big target for the feds. Three of the other families have this kind of arrangement. What's this, the fucking UN now? It's a shame then, you can't find a way to work things out. Give me a piece of bread, huh? Someone talks a little too much. In this case, Christopher Moldesanti. If you thought about this, maybe you let him keep Lorraine, and you take a bigger piece of his Florida shit, the clubs. If I wanted to worry about Florida, I would move to fucking Miami. You know, it wasn't long ago I remember you used to wait in the car. And as far as I'm concerned, you should still be there! Season 5, Episode 12, Long-Term Parking. Phil's brother, Billy, has just been killed by Tony Blundetto. Tony B goes rogue, becomes his own little army of one, after he finds out that Phil and Billy Leotardo killed Angelo Giraffe. Anybody ever die in your arms? A family member? Somebody you love? No. Well, give it time. See if I can't make that happen for you. Hey, what do you want, John? What do you want me to say? I want your cousin. A fucking spit. I don't know where he is. Fine. Maybe one of your other relatives then. What, I gotta stand here being threatened now? Hi, right, Chrissy. All right, all right, all right. No. You either deliver that prick to my door, or I will rain a shitstorm down on you and your family like you have never fucking seen. We're done here. Season 6, Episode 12, Kaisha. Carmine didn't want to call this a sit-down. He preferred to call it a meeting of minds. But it was a sit-down. For whatever reason, certain incidents have expired lately that in addition to being dangerous, could have an adverse impact on our respective bottom lines. The man was a fucking disgrace. But before he came out of the closet, he worked for me. And he put a lot of money in my pocket. And yours, too. Talk about Ernest. How about Fat Dom Gamiello? What about him? He's MIA. A lot of people are concerned for his well-being. Plus, coincidence would have it, he was last seen in New Jersey. So is the Hindenburg. Maybe you want to look into that, too. This infighting's costing money. I'm willing to move forward. Let the past be bygones. Wipe the slate clean. The no-shows, the wire room. <laughs> Vito. Just wondering if you thought about my offer. Put it all behind us. Yeah. Your brother Billy, whatever happened there. All right, then. Whatever, whatever happened there? The shooting. Whatever happened there? God rest his soul. Man. Come on. Season 6, episode 19. 
The second coming. There's another DeMeo Lupertazzi sit down. This time, it's over asbestos dumping. Asbestos. I thought about your offer. What do you say to 15% plus we forget about the balance uh, what you owe me on the vitamin truck? First off, it wasn't an offer. It's my position, 25%. I come here in good faith. I make a reasonable counter. Which I considered and rejected. This is business, Anthony. Yeah, I know. But I'm talking to you here on a human level. There's a limit, Phil. Feelings make things financially unfeasible. Charles Schwab over here. <laughs> Keep in mind this takes place just after the episode in which Tony kills Christopher, and this is also the episode where AJ is hospitalized for a suicide attempt. Though that doesn't happen until a little later on in the episode. But I think it's safe to say that Tony is not at his best right now, mentally. He might even be a little desperate, which is perhaps why he brings up the human level. You want compromise? How's this? 20 years in the can. I wanted Monacote. I compromised. I ate grilled cheese off the radiator instead. Season 6, Episode 21, Made in America. The final sit-down. What I'm thinking, you'd supply a neutral location. Guarantee everybody's safety. I could do that. There's been quite a lot of bloodshed. Bobby Bacalieri is shot and killed. Silvio Dante is shot and is in a coma. But before Sil is shot, he killed Bert Gervaisi. So a man by the name of George arranges this sit down. Anybody want a water? <sighs> no, no. We started it. We got a dead guman in Queens and our old Ukrainian father. John Sacrimony, my friend, I'm sorry to say was an insecure guy. And he created a constant tension within his own family which spilled over. Go ahead, Carmine. George was good enough to broker this meeting for us. You're just gonna sit there? It didn't have to be this way. We agree. It's gone too far. I got my word. We'll back off. Supposedly, by the end of it, things are resolved. But she says he agrees. It's gone too far. They have his word. He'll back off. Tony wants a location on Phil, but she says he can't go there. But you do what you gotta do. In other words, you wanna go take out Phil? Go ahead. We're not gonna try to stop you, but we can't help facilitate it by giving you his location. One more thing. You hit my brother-in-law. So? This is my sister we're talking about. She's got to see something out of this. We'll come up with a number. So, what was your favorite DeMeo Lupertazzi sit-down? I'd love to hear. Thanks for watching.